Good to go? Is this working? Are you hearing me? Yeah? Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, welcome to the panel. Oh, the dog's here. I love the dog. <laughs> Great. Um, so welcome to this panel, uh, of which the title is, Do We Need a Meta Metaverse? Uh, we're going to explore that term and see uh, what that's about. Uh, my name is Mareke. I'll be moderating the panel. I am uh, Belgian. Don't let my American accent fool you. Um, so I'm not a native speaker, so forgive me if I'm some, sometimes out of a loss for words. Um, but I'm going to hand it over to the panelists. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi, everyone, and thanks for being here. I'm Jivko, co-founder of EnterDAO, and um, super short, we're building DeFi tools for the metaverse. We have a couple of products out there. One is a marketplace for renting land, uh, Metaverse land, and the second one is a desktop app, which is basically a game portal with a built-in wallet to play Web3 games. Hey, everyone. I'm uh, Gwendal. I'm the founder of MetaWood. Basically, we are building uh, a marketplace for Metaverse land to make it short. Tons of other stuff coming up, but for now, that's who we are. Hi, I'm Dave Carr. I'm head of business development at Parcel, and uh, we're also a marketplace for virtual lands. Um, <laughs> we're also building a uh, creator directory um, for uh, creators, architects, designers, wearable makers, uh, event producers, and, uh, and a content platform which is also distributed across our social, really to educate and onboard people as to the metaverse and virtual worlds and all of the possibilities that exist uh, in the space. Hey, awesome. So um, we've been talking a lot about the metaverse. So I would like to ask you what the metaverse is for you or to you in one sentence. Sure. Um, for me, the metaverse is the border web tree virtual space, which has its own um, user owned economy, but it can also be used in my opinion for any um, virtual world game uh, where you have user uh, owned and user generated content. Yeah. Um, the popular wisdom is that the metaverse is uh, uh, the new internet. It's an immersive experience. It's a place where you, you can have a social experience through, like, usually people think VR, AR, etc. To me, it's mostly just about having a prolongation of your physical, you know, persona online through personal belongings, through like NFTs, for example, uh, and also through a um, personal identity that you can have through today avatars, JPEGs. That's what everybody is about today. I, I was going to make a really smart ass comment and suggest that the metaverse is a really bad term to describe what we're all doing here. Um, and I just did make that comment. But I think I, I like the new, in, new version of the internet. I like the idea that it's uh, an immersive and persistent layer of services and experiences because I think the metaverse tends to take people into this idea of ready player one and and uh, it has to be virtual and it has to be you know scuba goggles and I think it tends to ignore augmented reality projects and it, it ignores other fantastic services and experiences that are being created and uh, and I think it's this all-encompassing term with lots of different components to it. So in a sense, you're all building a, a type of gateway to the metaverse, um, which is sort of what we understand um, um, with the term meta metaverse being sort of a layer on top of all these different siloed experiences at this point, since there's not one metaverse yet. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still like in different platforms. Um, but you're all taking a little bit of a different angle to it. So go ahead and explain why why that is. Like you, you're a DAO, and why did you choose that approach? Sure. Uh, we're big proponents of uh, Web3 and basically user-owned economies. So we've decided to build our products in a DAO-first way. Um, and by doing so, we enable the community to have a say and also to have governance and ownership uh, since day one in the products that we're building. And as everything, this comes with its pros and cons because we need to be super transparent and decentralized and sometimes this could um, affect uh, moving speed for the sake of the integrity of the community and everything. Uh, but we're happy with our choices and we're more than happy with the community that, our that we've built. And this is why we've decided to build our products in a DAO first way and uh, we think that um, the metaverse is slowly moving to that direction as a whole. How about you, Gwendol? Yeah, meta, metaverse is a, an interesting term. 
Um, I mean, in my opinion, metaverse platforms, you can really see them as the new social networks, right? It's supposed to be, for the social ones at least, a place where people come, gather, discuss, exchange, make friends. And um, the difference with internet today is like the interoperability. You're supposed to be owning your own assets. So today, that's through NFTs, that's the technology we are using to build metaverse. And um, since you have interoperability, you need a layer on top of this platform, since you will need to move assets from one world to another and to move IP or whatever you can think of. So we need layers. And yeah, that's what we are building, I think. Yeah, yeah well, we, as our, our, our fundamental um, offering as a, as a land marketplace, we very quickly realized that land is really only as valuable as what you do with it. And that is what dr has driven us to make strong connections with the creator community, with architects and designers and, um, and DAOs. We're an advisor on a, on a DAO called Pangea DAO who are funding a treasury to buy land to enable creators to build because if you're a creator in this room, you will know that if you want to build in like a Decentraland or a sandbox, buying land, I mean, you can, you can obviously uh, put your creations up on the, up on the uh, up on the server for people, for landowners to bring onto their space, but in order to have your own kind of plot where you can express yourself and, and, and monetize is an expensive process. So yeah, we, we realized that we needed to facilitate that, that accessibility for creators, but also looking much further down the track to have a really robust content platform that just explains what the metaverse is and all, the, all of the different opportunities. And we, we, we're getting lots of inquiries from brands as well who are asking us that question. And, um, and so working with virtual worlds to, to not only promote them back to brands, but to educate brands on what is out there and what can we do and where should we be spending our money or uh, should we be spending our money at all? Uh, so yeah, we kind of look at ourselves as kind of a connective tissue between lots of different elements in the metaverse. Um, which we think at this point in the journey is, is really valuable for people. Yeah, so what do you think, in your opinion, is the, um, are the barriers to entry right now? You're saying that you're having discussions with brands about entering the metaverse or metaverse strategy. What do you think are the issues right now with specifically real estate or just having a metaverse presence? Um, for brands specifically or just generally across the board, the barriers? Yeah, so, well, land is in the old, the, the old guard of worlds, uh, the big four, I guess. Um, it's the expense of land, but I think for, well, there's on both sides of the, of, of the coin, you've got for the landowners, there's just vacant land is a massive problem. You know, a lot of the landowners are buying and they're just sitting and holding because they can see the price of virtual land going up and spiking every time there's a mainstream article about virtual real estate being the next big, you know, thing. Uh, but these virtual worlds that seem to pop up a new one every single week, um, there's going to be issues of attracting and then retaining. And for that, you need creators, you need content, you need experiences for people to go in and, and actually you know, invest their time in this world. So there's, there's issues, yeah, from an expense perspective with, with virtual real estate. And then just the fact that even though, let's take Decentraland as, a, as an example, they hold the Metaverse Fashion Week last week. There are thousands of users going in and experiencing that, getting lots of promotion. And yet you can go in to a section of the map and be completely surrounded by just trees and rocks and shrubs. And it's like, we need to get this, this moving. And, um, and so I think, yeah, there's each, each component of this experience has its own kind of barriers to, to, kind, of, to kind of overcome. I think for brands specifically, they, um, they, it seems that every agency or every brand has a, has a brief to its creatives to have a metaverse plan, uh, but they don't know what that plan is. They don't know at what point they should uh, have an experience. They don't know who they should be reaching. Um, should it be across multiple worlds? Should it be in one world? Um, and so we just rather, we don't give advice, we just help them to make sense so they can sort of come to their own conclusions, really. So it's, yeah, it's a, education's a huge thing still. We're very early. It's true, it's a similar experience actually with the brands and corporations we've been talking to. Everybody wants to get into the metaverse, but no one knows what to do. You know, it's like, uh, you just want to get in because it's the buzzword you have, you've heard. 
and you know it's the next big thing and you want to get in. And so I think there is a lot of education to make. That's really uh, something that has to happen. It's, I think it's similar. I've not been living it personally. Uh, I was too young, but uh, from what I've re been reading, it's really similar to the dot-com bubble, where everybody wanted a dot-com, you know, a website. Everybody wanted to be on the internet, but had no idea what they were doing there, you know, just to be there because it's not a big thing. So the same thing is happening with the metaverse, you know. Since, yeah, some corporation rebranded and it became a buzzword, now it's FOMO everywhere. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, education has to be done. Yep, I think we have really two high-level program, uh, problems, and one is education. And this is both for brands and for users, like what's an NFT, what's blockchain, etc. And because um, a lot of people are still lacking behind that, and they're just driven by the hype and the FOMO. And then with that comes also usability and UX, and we're still solving infrastructure problems like wallets, security. We're seeing a lot of people entering the metaverse and being scammed out of their NFTs. So with that comes security as well. So education and usability in UX, we're still trying to solve. Uh, but for brands specifically, um, there's still quite a journey for us as a space to um, basically travel, for them to have a smooth bridge or experience to, to the metaverse and web tree, for example. A problem that we're trying to solve is that we believe that not every brand should understand NFTs or land as an asset class and on that because it could be expensive the barrier to entry could be uh, too high so we're trying to provide them land for for rent uh, as temporary experience they can experiment with so yeah but I think education um, and usability are the two biggest problems so basically what what you're offering brands is a is a way to have like pop-up experience yep. where they can test the waters and see what the audience could be and how they can how they can enter into this metaverse before they actually go ahead and invest actually in land. Yeah, um, um, yeah. I, what you're basically saying here is that there's loads of opportunities for creators, designers, entrepreneurs to enter this space and start building, creating experiences, or even maybe being a landlord. Like, what what's yep. your advice for people that are interested in this? Like, how where do where do they start? Like, what's the easiest way to to start a business, I guess. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start off with that. Um, I think, and just to take a little sidestep, I think there's a lot of talk with virtual real estate about scarcity. I think that message comes from, let's say the larger developers, people who are speculating and they want you to feel in order to generate this FOMO that there's scarcity in the metaverse, this scarcity of virtual land. And I think to, to link back to, to your question, I think the true scarcity uh, right now and, and very much so down the track is going to be scarcity of creators, of the people who are going to make these virtual worlds and even the augmented reality projects to make them viable. And I, I really hope that this creates a, a, like a ruling class of creators. And I think with NFTs and ownership and, and this whole rethink of, 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 yeah, of ownership, of intellectual property ownership, um, there's, a, there's a real chance of that happening, I think. Uh, we've seen it with digital artists, um, we're seeing it with musicians, and, and that's really exciting. So I think for creators who want to get into the space, uh, I think it's about yeah, hooking up with, with people in the, the relevant community that you work in, that you want to be a part of, and I think the other thing that, that we've seen is just how collaborative people are and how keen they are to have a discussion with you and, and kind of onboard you. Um, as we've been creating our, our creator directory, we've yeah, re been reaching out to creators and just asking them what kind of a, a platform would you want us to create so that you could promote your work, you know, the tools that you use, the worlds that you've created stuff in, um, your projects, uh, and also communities, you know, having a community profile. And so we've got loads of great feedback. And, um, and yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a really great uh, ethos and feeling and community on, on Twitter and Discord and all of these places. And it's very easy to reach out and, and get involved. And I think that's the first port of call for anybody who's thinking about this space, just to get in contact, because there are people who want to talk and want to help you. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, uh, I'm a big advocate of the open metaverse. You know, it's like what we're building with Web3 through, yeah, a lot of people on Twitter and Discord. So main advice is definitely get your skin in the game, you know, spend time there, get into communities, like 
both online and in real life, right? Now COVID is over. Hope so. Uh, <laughs> a lot of events are happening. Look at us here. Like it's full, packed house. And meet people. You know, meet people in your uh, community, even like close networks we are building. It's really the best way to get in. And keep creating, keep building, and yeah, do it together. Yep, and I agree with all of that. And I think the one simple. Uh, advice would be just for people that are trying to get involved and just try to find your niche because there's so many uh, things and activities people could be doing like there's a huge demand for developers there's an even bigger demand and probably the biggest gap right now in supplies demand is um, people that are building um, scenes and in-game experiences within those metaverses but people could also design wearables clothes uh, events and stuff like that and there's a huge need for educators as well, people that write guides on how to uh, get involved in those games, how to uh, join events, create experience, and stuff like that. So there's literally, I guess, unlimited opportunities, and it just comes down to desire to get involved and find your niche. So join all the discords you can, uh, actually spend time in those games and try to actually provide more value than, than you extract, and I guess it's as um, simple as that. Yeah, because that's, I mean, we hear a lot about educating, um, um, you know, non-crypto users or, or non-crypto native users, but it's sometimes hard to differentiate the signal from the noise, right? There's okay. so many resources. So uh, are you planning on um, educating people on your platforms or are you referring people to other uh, places to go for education? Um, we're definitely planning to uh, do some educational content ourselves, but we also love the idea of crowdsourcing that, and we think that um, there should be as many uh, educational sources as possible. I think the um, hype and the noise comes more about more around the speculation part of, of the game and the metaverse space, not so much on the education side. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're doing both, so educating people ourselves, but also looking forward and trying to reshare and also redistribute educational content that uh, we see and we love as well. Yeah, since, I mean, you say the word yourself, we are gateways to the metaverse, yep. right? So I think we, we have a role to, you know, make it easier for people to get into the metaverses, to the different projects. So, of course, yeah, we, sh we have an educational role, I think. But um, it's, a, it's a job in itself, right? We need to be producing great education tools, great content, and uh, if you're chasing too many rabbits, it's, you know you don't get any. So mm. I think it's uh, we have a world, but there need to be you know the whole ecosystem involved and really people specialize in it. I think we have already great content, a lot of YouTube creators and people who you know put content online about what is the metaverse, what you can create, what you can do, and we we'll make it easy for people to gasp. And uh, I think these creators, individual creators, will be playing a key role in, in onboarding people into these experiences as well. Yeah, well, we're, we're yeah, in the middle of creating a, a content platform to educate and, and, and promote uh, virtual worlds, like introductions to the, the various worlds. I think the, the sites that do it really well at the moment, like NFT Plazas, mm. have been around for ages and, and just do a really great rundown of the, of the, four, you know, the four main virtual worlds. Um, but again, you know, to your point, Jivko, I think it's, it's aggregation of, of the best thinking in this space uh, Decrypt who are here, you know, they have a really great learn section. Um, and so, yeah, we'd be looking to emulate just the most straightforward um, approach to informing people about all the various aspects. I think that's, and, and yeah, I, I think aggregation is key. Like we aggregate the land listings, we aggregate, you know, creators and, and information as well. So you, you know, you're getting the very, the very best and not having to you know, sift through it yourself. Right. So I think Parcel supports four virtual worlds right now. Yeah, we onboarded a fifth uh, last week, Mona. Mona right. Gallery. Yep. Right. And so you're two, right? Yeah, I focused on Decentbox and Decentraland for now. Decentraland, and yeah. you're only Decentraland at this point. Um, yes, because renting is a bit more complicated. We're working on integrating other metaverses as well, um, but basically renting requires specific um, functionality in the smart contracts of the uh, land NFT itself, so um, it gets more complicated around that. Okay, so that's the reason why you're going with the central land first to sort of test the waters? And um, not only to test the waters, it's currently the most um, 
develop metaverse, I would say, in terms of audience and experiences, but um, also um, its technology is set up in such a way to basically enable permissionless building. Uh, but we are definitely metaverse agnostic and we're looking forward to integrating um, most of the games that make sense out there. So how come you're with Decentraland in the sandbox? Like, what's the, what's the reasoning there? If we integrate every single metaverse right now, we, yeah, we have to be a thousand. There is a thousand a day who actually launch. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of hard to keep track of everything. So we are focusing on really the one with the most volumes in terms of market right now, based on OpenSea, obviously. There are the big uh, players in the marketplace space. Um, and we are going to be adding some more in the future. Like we're going decreasingly to the one with the most volumes, but not only, we are also focusing. There are some really cool projects we think personally are, are yeah, super interesting and we are going to be doing sort of um, um, editorial aspect there by picking the metaverses we, we really cover. It's not, you cannot cover everything automatically. You need to do some manual work to get every platform you know, listed and to provide a good UX and UI for people to, to browse these assets. So uh, yeah, we are adding more. And what do you see differentiates the sandbox from Decentraland? Like, what are the, the main differences there? What, do they attract different audiences or different builders? Like yeah, uh, if you look at the sandbox in particular, they are really pushing on the partnerships with brands. And yeah, you see every week some new artists, some new brand who comes, Snoop Dogg who does a clip uh, in Sandbox. Pretty cool, right? And so they're really pushing on this aspect, um, while Decentraland is more really relying on the community yeah. to, to make it. You know, they're really, really relying on creators and people um, you know, doing these things themselves, you know, onboarding people and, and um, yeah, bringing people in. And you also have the visual aspects, right? Voxel versus non-voxel. It's an it's a eternal debate. Yeah. Dave, how about you? Why, what's, your, what's your take on all the different platforms? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree that it's, it's not about dumping as many as you possibly can into a marketplace. The, the, the worlds need to have, or the projects need to have merits. Um, I think just as a brand looks at a virtual world and thinks, I've got to be there, uh, we're, we're trying to, to do that thinking before, before they have to kind of make that decision. So um, it's about looking at roadmaps, it's about looking at, at yeah, the, what, what are they planning? What's, what's, what's the ethos behind the project? You know, uh, creators, uh, you know, what, 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 are, what are their experiences that they're planning for these, for these things? Um, the reason we have the four main worlds on there is simply because they're the most established and they were selling land and it made sense to have, have them on there because, you know, they were the best known of the, of the virtual worlds. We're also talking with the augmented reality projects like OVR who are here this week, um, who are, again, another fantastic project. Mona, we, we love because we, we just really discovered them one day and, and we're just taken in by these incredible spaces, these kind of endless spaces that were being built by you know, traditional architects coming into the space and, uh, and people who have always been using those 3D you know, tools, but just creating really beautiful, uh, well thought through spaces and, um, and in effect creating their own not metaverse, but virtual world, which is all of these spaces that can effectively be joined up by, by portals between the different spaces. So um, just talking to that, to that team and, um, and seeing how committed they were to their creative community, we thought it'd be fantastic to enable you know, another marketplace for them. Um, and that's, that's, I think, the benefit of, of, of all of our marketplaces is that we, we have that very specific focus on you know, entry to these experiences, whereas an open sea is, is doing everything and, and there's no point getting into the, the, the issues that people have with open sea. I think open sea does what it can, having to contend with so much stuff flowing through its, um, its platform. So I think by focusing and being really, um, being really specific and, and, and not curating, but, but um, going for, for really valuable experiences for people, I think that, that's, that's what we're trying to do, yeah. Are these um, these um, models that are being created? Are they on demand, or are they just the whatever the the creators are, are feel like making, and they just put it on the marketplace, or are are they having specific for for the Mona utility? yeah the Mona project? 
Uh, these are yeah spaces that people anybody can can create. It doesn't you know it doesn't cost you anything to create. Um, and they're using uh, Blender, they're using you know, all the traditional tools. And then if they choose to mint, then someone can buy that space and then it's theirs to do with whatever they, whatever they choose. So they initially, uh, talking to the guys who, who have a background from, from DreamWorks and Magic Leap, so they have you know, proper form in, in, this, in this area, they're all creatives. And, uh, and you know, they initially had boundaries to what they could create and the creators said, you know what, we want, we want you to remove the boundaries, we want to be able to create as far as you can possibly go. And, uh, and you end up just getting some fantastic Really, you know, there are some that are big built up kind of cityscapes. There are others there where there is a, a tree on a hill, you know, and it's a, it's a place to just to enter and, and enjoy the space. So, yeah, you can mint or you can just create for people to enter and, and enjoy. It's, it's, really, it's really open. It's, it's a great platform for just creative expression, which is why we loved it. So, we've just recently had the Metaverse Fashion Week, which was, you know, mixed, mixed responses to it because the, the, the tech might have not been ready. Uh, you know, there were glitches and, and bugs. And, um, but say uh, this was an inspiring event to an organization or a brand or somebody that wants to, to create a similar event. Like, how would they go about it? Do they reach out to you? Do they reach out to the Metaverses directly? Like, would, could, you, could you help them with that? How would that work? To launch an event like the um, fashion? No, just any vertical, any, any industry that would be interested in just creating an event. Like, what, yeah. what's your advice to these types of be, projects? Be, be careful, it's a jungle out there. There are a lot of NFT specialists, quote unquote. So, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> but most people don't, don't know much, right? I mean, everybody has their own uh, image. So, um, you should, yeah, definitely reach out to platforms. I think it's a good way to go, first step to go. But you cannot rely, you cannot be 100% blindly uh, confident in just like agencies, you know, all these agencies that pop up. I'm not saying like I'm, there are really talented people and brilliant people in some of them, but there is a lot of marketing done around it, you know. It's, uh, my LinkedIn is a mess. I have uh, not been on LinkedIn much, but I'm, I've been back again and I have a lot of requests from NFT experts, NFT agencies, and yep. yeah, it's, it's, uh, be careful. That's what I would say also. Yeah. I would say the, for the brands just to go for it and um, obviously um, they can reach out to, to everyone whether it's the marketplaces or um, creators or else. We always try to refer them to the right people. For example, we can advise them on what land do they need, if they need land, uh, who are the, let's say, some of the better creators that can help them design the experience. Um, but it's really important for them to understand the audience that they're catering to and that for some of these um, physical or like brick and mortar brands, the audience that they're speaking to uh, in the physical world is not the same audience that they they're catering to in the in the metaverse. Uh, but at the end of the day, we always tell like we always tell, tell brands that we think that we're still in the well, the metaverse is the next big social space, digital social space, and we still think that we are in the uh, MySpace era. So. I guess most of the brands and even games are still experimenting and finding what works. And I think the metaverse is going to be much more developed and straightforward in five years, but now it's just like a lot of experiments. So I guess it's uh, having a fast feedback loop and iterating on those experiences, what matters. Yeah, we, we had a, a build at, um, at Fashion Week and we uh, turned it into a, a precinct for the community. So to showcase, because there's a long history of, of creators in Decentraland creating wearables and putting them on the marketplace. So we, um, we did a build with a, a group called Metaparty who do um, events every week in Decentraland and, and we did a build and we had a catwalk and we ran a competition for um, existing wearables to take a, 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 you know, a selfie of your avatar wearing the, the outfit. Um, and, uh, and that was really loads of submissions for that. So that was, that was fantastic and it was a really good, really good four days. So, but you can see there's a lot of work that goes into that um, just for us. Even, even though we've, we have that experience and knowledge of Decentraland, I was previously at Decentraland before Parcel for two and a half years, so I know the ins and outs of that, of that virtual world. I think for brands, it's great to deal with organizations like ours because we've done the homework and, uh, and so we, we know the maps, we know um, 
we know some of the considerations that, that brands or people looking to get into the space should be, should be asking about or thinking about when they're, when they're looking to either you know, buy or rent. Uh, so, yeah, and, and I think you know, th these, these maybe fallacies of proximity and, and to, to, you know, to popular spots or footfall you know, or, um, or uh, size of land, you know, these are kind of considerations, but not really when you can teleport into central land. You don't need to be next to the most popular thing. Um, and in fact, I think uh, Decentral Games, which has probably the most uh, popular experience or one of the most popular experiences in Decentraland is right up in the corner of the map and Genesis Plaza is right in the center. So brands come and they say, oh, we want to we be at Genesis Plaza. And it's like, well, you don't really have to. And we need this amount of land. It's like, well, you can build up. So it's about educating also as to just the whole notion of moving through uh, a virtual space. Um, it changes your whole, your whole notion of, of, um, of proximity and, and position and, and size and all of that kind of stuff. So I think it's, you know, a lot of the conversations that, that Parcel has with brands are just going through those, those fundamentals of, of, of the different projects and then within those projects, what it means to, to, to hold land or, or occupy for a certain amount of time. So, so what you're saying is proximity doesn't really matter. But so how, how would you explain then that the land that surrounded Snoop Dogg's um, land was mo more valuable all of a sudden? Like, do you, do you feel like that the market is still understanding this in the wrong way? Do we... That well, works? I mean, since Sandbox is, is only in its second alpha, it's not open to the public, I think speculation drives a lot of that. They've done a great job with partnerships, and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a success. Um, and I think it's admirable that they are taking their time to properly develop it and build up that infrastructure and build up that community. Um, but I think, I think proximity and, and location will be a factor when VR headsets become more prevalent and more acceptable, and you know you can, you don't feel like you're throwing up after a half an hour of usage. Um, and then I think proximity, we also have to think about the AR projects as well. And I think AR, uh, and one of the speakers earlier mentioned this, that if Apple brings out a, a, a respectable pair of glasses next year, which is the, the mooted time frame, that's going to do more to onboard people to the metaverse and experiences of this, you know, this layer of services that I, that I mentioned earlier than anything Decentraland or Sandbox or whoever else, you know, the virtual players have been doing in the last three or four years. You know, you're going to be able to go from your smartphone to your glasses. Um, it's just going to be a much easier method of adoption. And then, then when you've got um, those, those layer experiences like OVR or Superworld or Earth 2, um, where you can buy land you know, in, a, in a space like this, then I think proximity and location will be key. So yeah, you can teleport in places like Decentraland and the Sandbox. Um, but I think when VR comes up, It'll, it'll, it will be relevant. Then you've got virtual worlds like Wilder World, which is a photorealistic virtual world that is, that is launching, and they're banning uh, teleporting, as, as I understand it. Uh, they sell vehicles and they sell sneakers. So their whole thing is about, you need to do the hard yards to get where you want to go. So I think in, in that particular experience, location and proximity to more popular experiences will be highly relevant. Yeah. And to complete on your question, I think location matters in the metaverse, and we see it in the prices today, like around the Snoop Dogg land, right? Prices are higher, mostly for discoverability. It's really similar to what we have in real life real estate. Like, you buy a shop next to a Nike store, the, sh the shop is going to be worth a lot of money because Nike is really famous, there is a lot of traffic, so part of this traffic will go to Nike, will go to you if you are next to Nike, right? So people make this reasoning for metaverse lands, and and that's, that's actually what is probably going to happen, right? If you have a parcel land who really gets a lot of traffic, uh, people around will benefit, will have a positive externality out of it, right? So that is going to drive prices up. Not only from a map perspective, like if you look on Sandbox, since you can put like the image of your, like the logo of your uh, project, your company or whatever, um, you are visible, right, if you are next to, to a big brand. Um, but also on an in-game aspect, if you're just working around and you go to a place, 
in a metaverse, in a pro metaverse platform, and, and you go for a specific experience, and next to it you see something else, you discover it this way. So yeah, this pricing model where you say proximity uh, to a, a, a zone of interest matters for pricing is, is yeah, relevant and just an extension of how, we, uh, how the world around us works uh, physically. Yeah. I think to Dave's point, proximity and location really depends on the game itself, and I think it matters less in Decentraland than it does in Sandbox, so just because of the way they've structured the map, and I think in Decentraland it's more important about the experience you built and the community that you attract to it. Uh, but as a comparison, there are other metaverses that have taken this whole notion of scarce metaverse land and throw it away, like uh, Nifty Island, for example, where everybody gets an island, a piece of land, and you can build uh, whatever you want on top of it. So there's no location or proximity there. And most of the games you can teleport, so it's really game specific, I would say. And this is why um, for brands to do anything in there, they need to be talking to people that understand the context of the game um, and spend actually time in the game so they can um, give them good advice. So I think, so we touched on proximity being a factor into how valuable a plot of land could be. Are there, or what's being built on there, what, what the experiences are. Are there other factors that inf influence the, the value of the land? It's a good question. Um, you can build virtually anything, whether it's like you can be a, you could build a co-working space, you could build an uh, NFT gallery, you could build like a shop. Uh, for example, there is a, a project called Boson Protocol, which basically built this brilliant shopping strip uh, during the Metaverse uh, shopping week, uh, fashion week, and you could, there was like all these brands having shops in there, so there was like a Tommy Hilfiger store, and you could actually buy physical goods, like a physical hoodie, that gets shipped to your door, uh, but you buy it in the central land. So you could virtually buy, uh, build anything, and if it matters, like any other factors, like in my opinion, uh, it doesn't matter what has been there before, because you can deploy and redeploy scenes quite easily and wipe out everything, so uh, probably if there are factors, location is the most important, but I'm curious to see what the others hear, what the others think as well. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's pretty, dependent on the platforms. I think the same way we have, uh, you can see metaverses as a new social networks. The way we have social networks today, it's specialized social networks, right? You go to a social network to, to shit post, you go to a social network to listen to music, you go to watch videos. So I think for metaverses, we'll have something similar where in terms of just model, right? Uh, f uh, uh, physical engine and, and just a game engine, if we call it that way. Um, I don't believe we will manage to have one metaverse to rule them all, right? One platform where you can do concerts and social experiences and shopping. I think we'll have the op optimized experiences on different platforms, and that's probably the way it's going to shape. I, maybe I'm, I'm wrong. I know some players are trying to do uh, 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 the metaverse, and there will be another, but yeah, I don't believe in it. Uh, possibly fractionalization is a way that um that you could in increase the value of the land if, if you enable your land to be used by others or owned by others um, so that there is a way for others to monetize and to, to earn an income from, from that land. Um, I think that's, a, that's another way, but yeah, I think it really comes down to what is built on, uh, on that land is crucial and I think the virtual worlds know that that they're going to need to attract the best creators yep. to make to make their projects viable, and so yeah, I think. But then it goes both ways, you know. If the virtual world is 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 doing its job properly and 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 getting people in, then then that's going to increase the value of the land as well. But yeah, it's this 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 very very close relationship between landowners and and the worlds and making sure the landowners are, are, are there for the right reasons and, and, and building and doing as much as they can to, yes, the symbiotic relationship, I guess, the host. And so, so what is the state of the market right now? Are you seeing continuous value going continuously up? Is it going up and down? What, what influences it? Are you, is there a, a trend that we can see here? There has definitely been a peak right after uh, the big hype around the metaverse. Um, I think you have, you have two, 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 two forces in effect. You have both this uh, 
hype around the metaverse that's kind of cooling down, right? People are actually taking a step back and building, and you don't have this frenzy that you had where everybody wanted to buy a land and, and it went crazy. And you also have the NFT you know, market slowing down as a whole, you know, after this general craziness around NFTs that's, that's playing. So you definitely see it slowing down in terms of volume, volume and, and you know, land prices, but it's not, yeah, it's not like, a, it's not been a, Dying, right? It's still a lot of activity around. Yeah, and it's, I, I think it's sane, right? It's you cannot maintain a sane ecosystem with so much, you know, uh, uh, speculation and, and frenziness and and FOMO. I, I think it's good for speculators at all. You know, that's why we say in general, like uh, bull markets, is good, great for people to make money, but that's not the best time to build. Yep. So yeah, it's a good. Uh, thing. It's actually a good thing that it's slowing down. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I agree, really. I mean, <laughs> what else is there to say, I think? Well, I was, I was curious about rental prices. How does that work? Like, how do you um, decide on that? On our end, so we basically work like Airbnb, meaning that uh, the owner of the land decides on the asking price, and the renter has to agree with it whenever. Um, what we've built is completely decentralized, so essentially all smart contracts, and the renters and the lenders um, interact peer-to-peer -peer on Ethereum, so um, landowners decide on the pricing. Um, we definitely, like, to their point, I like, completely agree that there was like, um, towards the second half of last year, like, um, unrealistic hype that didn't match the um, level of infrastructure and developing development of the whole metaverse space, but I think now we're slowly picking up and we're seeing actual, like, we're still super early. Um, everyone is still experimenting, and the, the space will be shaped up in the next five years. But um, the actual brands that are doing experiences, that and the same brands were just talking about it six to nine months ago, and now we're seeing uh, Metaverse Fashion Week. We're seeing usage on our platform where people. There's one one guy that rented land to create a um, Metaverse wedding hall. So he's actually. Uh, throwing weddings uh, in the metaverse and issuing uh, NFT marriage certificates, which is interesting. So we're starting to see more use cases and people experimenting. Um, but um, yeah, I think we're past the peak hype and now it's more um, sustainable growth of the space and we're seeing actual development as well. I think we might have time for one or two questions. No, okay. No, no, <laughs> no questions. Okay, right. so maybe just like one more piece of advice, like how, or, or one takeaway from this talk, what, what, what would it be? Um, my personal one is that we're still probably five years away from the metaverse that we're all imagining. And yeah, I think the people that are here in this conference are going to shape the next five years. So just uh, grateful for everyone that's here today. And uh, if you want to chat, just come find me after the talk. Um, we're always here. Definitely happy also to be meeting people uh, in real life. It's great to be on Twitter. It's great to be on Discovery. Yep. It's also great to put faces on, on avatars. And, uh, and yeah, I'm really glad to be in this space also and that we can build it up together. And uh, we are hiring, by the way. So reach out on metaud.xyz. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the, the beauty of this conference and, and other conferences we've been to is just meeting the, as you say, the, the creators, the people who are going to you know, build this space and, and, and I hope that events like this and, 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 and others will, you know, spread the word and, and encourage more people to get involved and to join that period of building that we're now, I think, agree that we're entering into. Um, get the focus off land prices and get the focus onto doing stuff with the land and, um, and, and yeah, it, we are still very, very early, and this is still very much the, the, the nascent period. I, you mentioned the, the, the MySpace period. I think we're even maybe earlier than that. You know, it's like um, there's so much opportunity. So, yeah, it's really heartening to walk around out there and talk to people and, and to get this sense that, um, that there's so many great creative ideas floating around that don't just have to be like uh, the latest NFT project, but people who are doing infrastructure, you know, building the foundation of this thing, which I think is really important. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.